For many years, scientists have led us to believe that the universe is expanding, starting from a single point of origin. But now, a disturbing discovery by the James Webb Space Telescope shows that this was a mistake. We clarify why the Space Telescope spells the definitive end of the expansion theory and what implications this has for our knowledge of the universe. Stay tuned as we show you the discovery that shocks the entire space industry. Shock to the scientists. For decades, the Big Bang and the expansion of the universe were almost irrefutable truths. If both theories now turn out to be wrong, it's a shock that will revolutionize the entirety of astrophysics. So, have we been led around by the nose for almost a century now? And why was science so sure that it had found irrefutable truths in both theories? This can be explained quite simply in such a way that both theories fitted for a long time so well into the picture that they were considered scientifically as proven. That means in layman's terms that the theories agreed in a mathematical and physical way with the most common standard rules in the cosmos and both theories could be proven mathematically several times and from several sides. Those who know the most about matter and the possibilities of astronomy know, however, that observation possibilities are still limited and error-prone for us humans. Scientists observe with optical telescopes the light which spreads in the universe. With radio telescopes, they listen for frequencies and radiations in the cosmos. Gravity sensors can catch the finest waves which also spread through the universe. But it's basically like a scientist using a telescope to look from Europe to America at night and catch the light. This scientist has never seen the continent with his own eyes or even walked on it. He can see certain sections, juxtapose others, and thus try to arrive at an overall picture about this foreign world. At this point, you can probably imagine vividly that the exploration of a whole continent at this distance and with a telescope is difficult. It's exactly the same when a scientist can only pick up gravitational or radio waves. Deciphering the signals is a puzzle, and even if some things make mathematical sense, there is still an immense room for surprises. That this also applies to observing the cosmos from Earth is now being shown to us in an impressive way by the James Webb Telescope. Big Bang and Expansion Are Wrong to understand the Big Bang Theory and the expansion of the universe, we must first understand the concept of space-time. Space-time is also a purely mathematical idea that brings together the three spatial dimensions and the time dimension. What complicates matters is the fact that space-time is not a perfect experimental box in which quantities such as length, width, height, and motions can be easily measured. After all, we don't even know if the universe is really a linearly structured space. The second catch is that space-time is rather structured like a living fabric. The presence of matter and energy affects and moves space, and at the same time, space and its structures move and affect matter and energy. Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity long provided a reliable framework for understanding the curvature of space and time caused by heavy objects as well as the physically effective and observable forces within space-time. However, even Einstein never succeeded in finding a unified field theory that describes all phenomena as well as the structure and motions within space. If we look at the theory of the Big Bang, the universe originated about 13.8 billion years ago from a single point, which is called singularity. This point had infinite density and temperature all matter and energy were compressed at this point to this infinitely small and hot zone. From this point, the universe then began to expand after a massive discharge of energy. At first, the universe was filled with a very hot, dense, and energetic particle plasma. Already in the first seconds after the Big Bang, the universe cooled down significantly and it expanded. At some point, the temperature dropped to the point where electrons could combine with protons to form atoms that were initially still neutral. About 380,000 years after the Big Bang, this process of recombination allowed the free flow of photons through space. We can still measure this flow today by means of the cosmic background radiation. 
Exactly in this background radiation, researchers thought to have found clues and proof for the expansion of the universe. The expansion of space-time is the second clue, which spoke so far for an expansion. This dilation, however, is not a movement in space in which objects move away from a central point, but an expansion of space itself. Imagine a dotted balloon being inflated. The dots move away from each other as the balloon grows, not because the dots themselves are moving, but because the space between them is getting wider. Similarly, galaxies and other celestial objects are carried along by the expansion of space. Follow-up calculations of the observed expansion also never gave a consistent picture. Some model calculations assume that the universe will continue to expand until it ruptures. Others say that the universe will eventually freeze, and the latest common future prediction based on expansion theory says that the expansion will come to a halt. There is even evidence that the universe is already slowing down extremely now. The Mystery of Dark Matter Dark energy was previously thought to be the driving force behind the expansion. But even this theory has pitfalls, because dark energy is so far only a hypothetical assumption, and no one can prove that it really exists. Practically, it's the force that fills the gap when it comes to describing observations of the expanding balloon. In this way, scientists have already been able to predict many phenomena of the universe without observing them in reality. So this kind of science has already led to many successes, but it's not free of errors. In the last decades, researchers claim to have found further evidence for a negative pressure, which even contributes to the acceleration of the expansion. Although, another important role in the models of expansion and motions of space is played by the distribution of matter. According to the equations of general relativity, the density of matter and energy affects the curvature of space-time. Regions with higher matter density exert a stronger gravitational pull and thus, hypothetically, slow down the expansion of the cosmos. Regions of lower density, on the other hand, exert less gravitational attraction and thus contribute to the overall expansion. The distribution of matter in the universe is not uniform, but is organized into massive cosmic structures such as clusters of galaxies and superclusters, which in turn are connected by a cosmic web of root braid-like cosmic filaments. These structures are formed when regions of higher matter density collapse due to gravity. As the universe expands, these cosmic structures also experience stretching due to the expansion of space-time. At the same time, gravitational forces within space-time counteract the expansion, resulting in a complex interaction between the expansion of space-time and the gravitational attraction of masses. On the whole, however, expansion is supposed to have the upper hand in this cosmic tug-of-war causing the cosmic web to become ever more stretched. James Webb proves the opposite. Scientists using the James Webb Space Telescope have discovered six massive galaxies in the early universe that, judging by previous theories of the Big Bang and expansion, should not exist. These galaxies have not only unusually much mass, they are also extremely luminous and complexly organized. On top of that, they already existed 200 to 400 million years after the previously assumed Big Bang. Thus, these galaxies called universe breakers contradict 99% of the cosmological predictions so far. According to the old calculations, even in a period of up to 700 million years after the Big Bang, there could not have been enough matter in the universe to construct such massive galaxies. At this time, just the first stars were formed. Complex galaxies should have formed only from one billion years after the Big Bang. The only thing that is clear so far is that something is wrong with the current cosmological view of the world. Observations of the mass and age of these galaxies will most likely require a change in current cosmological models or a revision of the scientific understanding of how galaxies formed in the early cosmos. At present, Quite a few branches of science still resist this idea that the Big Bang may never have occurred. 
More data are needed to determine whether galaxy candidates are as large and old as they appear. After all, it's possible that there is something wrong with our previous measurement data, in which case the age or distance of the galaxies might have been misjudged. However, the amount of mass discovered means that the most massive stars at this time are up to 100 times larger than we previously thought. Even if this value had to be halved due to errors, there would still be a remarkable difference. The second theory at the moment is that these objects are not galaxies at all. Critics of the observation note that the impression of the objects may be distorted because they appear in the foreground of supermassive black holes. But this also raises another problem. For supermassive black holes should not even exist yet in these regions of space either. Other theories try to equate the discoveries with faint quasars or all other conceivable objects in the cosmos. But so far, all these explanation attempts fail. Hubble also provided innovations. No one expected how quickly the James Webb Telescope would change the world with its discoveries. Yet, it was much the same in the early days of the Hubble Telescope. When Hubble was launched into low Earth orbit in 1990, the telescope quickly began to paint a much more complex picture of the early universe than researchers had originally anticipated. However, Hubble's observations did not shake foundations of astrophysics, as James Webb is now doing. Hubble already provided evidence that the expansion rate of the universe cannot be the same in all directions. Reworking the theories then led to the findings we've already presented to you. Gravitational influences slow down the universe in places while it expands faster in others. But these differences in the expansion rates can also be explained by other interesting theories. From the observations, numerous models of the universe without a single beginning and endpoint can be derived. The pocket universe assumes, just like the bubble or the multiverse, a space structure which is based on completely different geometrical structures and distributions of forces. Euclid shall bring the truth to light. In July 2023, the European Space Agency's Euclid Telescope will be launched. The telescope is specifically designed to photograph billions of galaxies and finally provide a detailed study of the expansion of the universe, its acceleration, and the existence of dark energy. This could help explain the phenomena of apparent or actual expansion and decipher the actual structure of the universe. Do you think these efforts will come to fruition? Let us know if you have an exciting interpretation of James Webb's observations that are all your own.